Well, hello again, guys, and welcome to another Flight Deck 2 Sim tutorial. Today, we're going to be looking at the 737 engine start procedure. So, I'm going to show you how to start the engines normally, uh, also, something called an isolated pack operational start, and also how to start the engine using a ground air source and then a cross speed start if we don't have an APU available. So, what do we need to start the engines? Well, basically, we need two things. We need a source of AC electrical power and also a source of pressurized air. Now, thankfully, we have something called the APU, which is at the back of the aircraft, basically a small jet engine can, which can provide both. So just before we start the engines, we need to ensure we have electrical power on the aircraft, which the APU is currently generating the power for. And we also need the source of pressurized air from the APU. So we need to turn the APU bleed on. So basically we can now see the duct pressures increasing, the APU bleed air is then used to start the engines. But firstly we need to turn the air conditioning packs off, uh, the air conditioning packs basically provide conditioned and pressurised air for the cabin, uh, but turning them off ensures that we have the maximum uh, amount of APU bleed air for the aircraft. Uh, so now we have that set, the APU bleed air is used purely to start the engine. So just before we start the engine we need to contact tower to let them know we're ready. Uh, we're in Pisa today, which is a uh, stand 15, which is a self-positioning stand, so there's no uh, pushback required. So just before we get the start, we get the clearance, so it'll be something like Fly Deck to Sim, Request Engine Start, Stand 15, and then they say Start is Approved. Uh, just before we do that, we need to turn the transponder to out off, so ground radar, if it's installed, uh, the air traffic controllers can see us. Ensure the air conditioning packs are off, and the APU bleed is on, which we've already done. Turn on the anti-collision light on as well and then we do the checklist uh, below the line to ensure we're ready to start. Now, I'm sure most of you who watch my videos are pretty uh, proficient with this aircraft, you know how to start the engines and basically all we have to do is move the start switch to ground. Uh, just before that a lot of people discuss the igniters. Now you don't have to move in between igniters between each engine, each uh, engine has two igniters and in my company we leave it in ignition right uh, for all our engine starts. So. Just before we start the engine, I'll bring up the lower and upper DU engine management so you can see uh, what indications we're looking for during the start. And all you have to do is move the start switch to ground. So the EGC comes alive and then you get the indications for EGT. The first thing you see is N2, so that APU bleed air is spinning the N2 rotor and that's increasing. Uh, pilot my flying will be doing this procedure, so he call N2 and N1 once that rotation started and the pilot monitoring would call oil pressure and waited for 25% N2 we move the start lever to cut off. There we go as soon as that gets to cut off a couple of seconds later the EGT increases as the fuel is ignited and then it starts spawning up the engine. Now pilot flying keeps his hand on the start lever for the entire start procedure just in case he has to shut the engine down uh, due to the aborted engine start condition. Good, 56% N2, the start switch will move from ground to off, which it has done there, and then we wait for this light, and then the pilot monitoring will call start and cut out, and then we're looking for this stabilised engine criteria, so we say 2 uh, for the M1, 4 for the EG2, 6 for the N2, and then 3 for the fuel flow, so this number 2, 4, 6, 3 is what we're looking for for a stabilised engine. Good. So most of you know that you can simply switch uh, the number one engine to ground uh, and that's what we'd usually do for most days but there's a neat little trick you can do to start providing conditioned air to the cabin. We use this when it's a very hot day. Basically what we do, we turn the right pack to auto and then we close the isolation valve. The number uh, two engine is providing conditioned air for the cabin and the APU bleed air can be used to start number one engine. So just before we start engine number one, uh, it is normal procedure to start engine number two first, and there is no real requirement to start number two first. But the reason we do it is, well, firstly we can do this isolated pack operation and uh, provide conditioned air, and it's also always traditionally been the case that the number two engine starts and has been started first. Good. So now we can start engine number one. Move the start switch to ground. Bring up the DU, and there we go. Even though the engine number two is providing the conditioned air, we can still start engine number two. With the APU bleed. So there's the N2 increasing, N1's increasing, oil pressure's increasing as well. 25% N2, start leave it to our uh, idle detent. We also check the uh, fuel spar valve, it's quite difficult to do that in flight simulator to look at the overhead panel as well. And then we can see the EG2 uh, is rising. So 
exactly the uh, same procedure, 56% N2, uh, start switch will move from ground to off, and we're looking for the star valve open to extinguish, and then pilot monitoring, same again, we'll call the start to cut out, and then he'd say monitor engine number one, and we check 2463, engine number one is stable, and that's how you start the engines normally. Alrighty, so now I'm going to show you how to start the engine using a ground air source and then a cross bleed start using another engine. Now the only time you'd ever really have to do this is if the APU was inoperative, because remember the APU before was providing a source of electrical power and pressurised air. So having a look at the overhead panel now, the APU is uh, currently off. If it wasn't working you get a big in-op sticker here reminding us crew not to use it. The GPU is currently providing electrical power to the aircraft. So basically we need a source of pressurised air externally. So let's have a look externally to the aircraft that we currently have connected. Uh, outside and then spot. Good, so you can see we have a GPU connected to the aircraft which is providing electrical power. Now thankfully PMDG uh, and their wisdom, they have allowed us to use an air starter unit. So if I remember rightly, under FSX Actions, ground connections, uh, air starter unit, there you go, so we just connected that. So the air starter unit is basically a massive metal box on wheels, you stick diesel in it and it provides hot pressurised air for the cabin and it makes a lot of noise and in real life you get a little black diesel smoke coming out of it as well. Good, so now we have a source of electrical power and pressurised air, if you look at the overhead panel, there you go, we can see the duct pressures increase and now we have to start the engines in a little bit of a different way than before. We have to start engine number one first, because we need to use engine number one uh, to cross speed start on the ground to start engine number two. There's a lot of precautions you need to make as well. So in real life if we were doing this we'd call up TAU and say uh, flight deck to sim request engine start on stand and then a cross speed start on stand and then they go yep flight deck to sim engine start approved and as before turn the anti-collision light on and then uh, verify the air conditioning packs are off and we move the transponder to out off, sorry, not standby, and then we complete the checklist. So we have a unique checklist starting with a ground air source, uh, so I'll do that now. We need to make sure that the APU bleed air switch is off, which it currently is if it's not being used, and then we basically start engine number one first normally. Uh, we have the duct pressure available, so it should start absolutely fine. So starting engine number one, we move that to ground. Now the air starter unit is providing the pressurised air to start the aircraft. So you can still see we have a little bit of EGT remaining from that, that's because I've basically uh, just started this straight away from when we started the engine about 5 minutes ago. The so same as before, uh, N2 increasing, N1 increasing, oil pressure and at 25% N2, move the start lever to idle detent, check the overhead panel, spar valve close goes from dim to bright and then off and then we monitor the engine start. Excellent, so approaching 56% N2, it's exactly the same as before, start switch goes from ground to off, waiting for the start valve open line to go off, and then pilot monitoring, start to cut out, it's a monitor engine number one, and exactly the same, 2463, number one is stable. So now we have one of the engines started, uh, we put number one engine generator on the bus, that means the ground crew can now remove the uh, electrical uh, GPU and the air starter unit, so we can remove that now, just remove the marking brake. So now the aircraft is self-sufficient, number one is started, uh, the engine number one is providing electrical power and we're going to use engine number one uh, air pressure to start engine number two. There's a lot of precautions we have to make before we do that, okay. So we start engine number two on stand, <clears throat> we make sure that the ground crew has disconnected the GPU and the air starter unit and then we move some of the switches around on the overhead panel. So, moving on the overhead panel, we need to turn it, make sure the engine bleed air switches are on. Verify again the AP bleed air switches off. The air conditioning packs are still off and the isolation valve is auto. So we keep the exact configuration as we do with any other start. But we need to increase thrust on number one engine because we need to increase the duct pressure. We need at least 30 PSI to start the engine. So I'm going to increase thrust on engine number one until we get duct pressure to 30%. So I'm going to do that now. You can hear the engine spawning up. Never give it too much because obviously if you increase thrust there's going to be a lot of potential to suck up uh, 
FOD, which is foreign object debris, and also the wrist ground personnel. So now we've increased thrust to at least 30 psi, and uh, we can start the other engine. So I'm just going to close the thrust lever on engine number two. There we go. Next, let's move the trim wheel. Now we have the engine number one providing enough uh, air pressure for the bleed duct pressure. We start engine number two. So we move the start switch to ground. There we go. Now the aircraft is using bleed air from engine number one using a cross bleed start procedure. And there we go, you can see the N2 is increasing. N1's increasing slowly. Oil pressure at 25% N2. Starting if it goes to mildly tense. And there we go, the engine's started up normally. need to leave the thrust on the number one engine to ensure the duct pressure uh, doesn't drop off otherwise it could cause issues during the start. As soon as we get the start cut out, so 56% N2, and we get the start of our open light extinguished, we then put both the thrust levers to idle. There we go, start a cut out and now we can close both thrust levers. Oh sorry, this is the number one thrust lever I should say, the other one was closed. And that guys is it. Uh, we then commence the pushback and uh, div and all after start flow from there. So that, guys, is it. That's the end of the engine start uh, procedures tutorial. Hope you learned something new. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe the video. Uh, if you ever want to talk to me or have any ideas, you can visit my Facebook page. You can find the link in the description. I also have an Instagram channel where I upload a few pictures from work as well if you might find that interesting. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again for another tutorial very soon.